So the Sony FX3 is one of my favorite cameras, and I've been shooting quite a lot on it. So just today's video, I decided to give it a little bit of a treat. We're actually going to be using the Blazar 45, 65, 100 millimeter lenses, and we're going to give the Sony FX3 the anamorphic treatment. Is it too bougie to have anamorphic A-roll? Nah, who cares? Cam and Armando let me borrow the 45, 65, and 100 millimeter Blazar Remus anamorphic lenses. I really want to try these guys out because it offers something a little bit different than some of the other anamorphics that have come out recently. Now, these are going to be fully manual lenses, but I am using the DJI Focus Pro, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But what I wanted to go through is some of the characteristics right off the bat that I noticed. The build quality on these lenses are incredibly good. They're made out of a metal housing, which a lot of the affordable lenses are, which is actually a really nice feature and as well as you are going to get those anamorphic flares with the 1.5 squeeze. Now, personally for me, I prefer an amber flare. However, these lenses aren't mine and I don't really have a say in how things go. But even when I put the flares on there, even though it's more of a blue anamorphic flare, it doesn't seem super pronounced like you would see on some of the other anamorphic lenses. Oftentimes, you're going to see a really pronounced flare either being amber or being blue, but I find the Blazars to be a little bit more subtle. Now, we did get to use a full spectrum of the Blazar anamorphic lenses, and I set up my FX3 on the 65 that lived on it on my handheld rig but let's break down the rig first because there's a whole bunch of stuff that's on it that makes it look kind of cool we actually have the autofocus we have anamorphic and we have prores raw as well and we're also going to use nds in order to have a complete setup now this has an fx3 under it if you take off all the parts but i actually did attach this to the cine back from camber foundry shout out to kayla pike in order to be our base the reason why i wanted to do that is because it has multiple dtap ports that i could plug in my dji focus pro which is an absolute game changer for cinema lenses and anamorphic lenses i am using the condor blue top handle this is the talon i believe and what i like about it is that it has this little finger slot in here so when i'm carrying this guy around it doesn't feel as heavy because the weight distribution is pretty nice on this guy despite the despite despite the top handle being a little bit smaller i also put on a condor blue magic arm that's going to attach to my monitor and we're going to be using the blazar remus 45 i actually use a 65 but the 45 was for my a roll i'm also using condor blue dovetails and base plates as well so that way i can mount on the focus pro motor and of course if you want to get ProRes raw I'm using the Atomos Ninja 5. Now, I've taken out the SSD drive to drop off some of the footage that you guys are watching, but this gives you the ability to shoot in ProRes RAW on the Sony FX3. It also gives you a little bit of a resolution bump as well, and you can shoot a DCI to give yourself a little bit more width in terms of the anamorphic footage, but it's not a whole lot. I shot handheld on the 65mm, and let's see what that looks like before we move on to the other lenses in the range. Now, one of the advices that Cam gave me in terms of using this lens is that you might want to stop down to a T2.8. This lens is a T2, but it, sometimes it's a little bit on the softer side at T2, and if you don't want that much character and you want a little bit of sharpness, you might want to consider stopping down to T2.8 in order to get the sharpness but still get some of those lens qualities. The color on these lenses actually look amazing. It feels like there's a little bit of lift in some of the darker areas. All the color rendition is really nice, but it doesn't feel like a modern lens. A lot of lenses that I've used from other brands just feel like spherical modern lenses with anamorphic flaring in them and a little bit of de-squeeze, but it doesn't necessarily have things like the distortion qualities that you want from an anamorphic lens or some of the subtle flaring and things that aren't pronounced in your face. Also, these Blazars have a little bit of charm to them. They're not incredibly sharp, but they're not incredibly dull either. They still have a little bit of pop, and I would say they're more detailed than they are sharp. Now we didn't only shoot handheld on the 45 and the 65 millimeter lenses. We also put on the 100 millimeter on the DJI RS4 and we also got some rolling shots as well. The 100 millimeter and all the other lenses in this range did an amazing job. I find the colors not to be super harsh. I don't find it to be incredibly punchy. I usually use my film look grading on my images and it makes the Blazars look really good and it complements it very, very well. Now there is a trick if you want to fix a little bit of distortion. Again, that's going to be in Cam's video 
video, I don't want to retread old water, but overall, I really do like the way that these were formed. I actually got so much of the anamorphic kick, I even decided to make some anamorphic photos as well. These are actually on the GFX 100, and if you guys want to see a video about that, I'm working on it right now, and you guys can subscribe to stay tuned to see how that turns out. One thing that you have to consider with anamorphic lenses and what makes them so good is that you have that compression of longer focal lengths, but you also have the width of something that's a little bit wider. If you do the equation to the 45 millimeter divided by the 1.5 times squeeze, you're going to get the width of something like a 30 millimeter, but you're going to get the depth of something that's 45. And the same is going to be true on the 65 going down to about a 43 and the 100 millimeters somewhere around the 66 ish range. This way you're going to get a little bit more wider aspect ratio, but at the same time you get that lens compression that you get from longer focal lengths, which really worked well when using the 100 millimeter for the car shots. Now I want to also point out that I am shooting on the 45 millimeter Blazar Remus as well, and this wouldn't have been made possible if I wasn't using the DJI Focus Pro. Now if you want to see a video about that, I'll leave that on the screen here, but the DJI Focus Pro makes it a lot easier to work with cinema lenses, let alone using anamorphic lenses as well. I set this guy up on my rig and it was a joy to work with because as long as I was within 60 feet of my subject, it was able to catch on the light our autofocus while using that setup. Now the last lens in this range is going to be the 45 millimeter and I actually didn't shoot a lot on the 45 millimeter because I lived on the 65 but Connor actually paired this up with an unexpected lens combination in the Nikon Z8. Overall I think the Blazar Remus is for the quality that they have and the price that they are is an absolute steal. If you want to get the set of these three lenses you're looking at only about $2,500 which is a lot better which you could save from some of the other lenses that are being offered. Some cinema lenses nowadays cost two or three grand a pop and even if you wanted to get say two two lenses, it would still cost you more than getting three anamorphic lenses from Blazar. Now, at the time of this video, there's only three lenses available, but if you haven't noticed right now, I might not be in my house, but I am really close to an event that might be announcing a couple more coming down the line. That being said, a special shout out to Cam for actually setting up the shoot and Connor, Armando, and Evan for bringing me on to actually test out these lenses. If I'm going to make a recommendation for some of these lenses and cinema lenses in general is that you want them to say something. You want a particular charm and characteristic when you're getting different cinema lenses, or you could just get sphericals and throw on adapters or do things in post. With the Blazar Anamorphics, you get a lot of those qualities inside of the camera between the color and the bokeh and also getting that flaring that's a little bit more on the subtle side and the overall characteristic and charm. But with all that being said, if you guys want to see another video on the DJI Focus Pro because it did steal the show and made the process working with anamorphic lenses a lot easier, well, you can click that video over here. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. We have some special things going on. Peace.